of blended learning for the Associated Colleges of the South. Uh, she took that position in September 1st. September 1st, okay, September 1st. Um, and I thought that that was an appropriate person to start us off because I think the kinds of programs that Amanda is going to be working on and is working on are exactly the kind of programs that this group wants to be involved in. So Amanda, it's all yours. because I really do think I have so much to tell you and I'm a little afraid that I'm going to overwhelm you with ideas and information here, but it's great that I get to go at this point in the conference because you can talk with me and we can follow up on, on anything that kind of sparks your interest. So what I wanted to do was just to spend a little bit of time telling you a bit more about the Associated Colleges in the South, which I'm not sure what our, our level of knowledge about what the consortium is and what it's doing. Um, is in this room, so forgive me if I'm repeating things you already know. I'm sure there might be some new information in there too. And then I want to tell you a little bit about my position and, and what exactly it is I'm doing with and for the ACS. And then I want to talk about um, some ways that I think we, some directions, I'll say, for collaboration um, and some issues in IT that it would be really helpful for us as a consortium to get your input and your participation in. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started. There we go. Okay, so what is the ACS? Well, it's, uh, of course, a consortium of 16 distri uh, distinguished liberal arts colleges. Um, and I know that, you know, you know, you all know this already, but I think it's really interesting to kind of look at our institutions on the map, right? Because one thing that you start to notice as you think about college consortiums is that we're really spread apart. Um, and that, to me, is really important for us when we're thinking about the uses of digital technology and the kind of connections and communications that that can facilitate. Um, we have so much to talk about, and now we have so many great tools to bring our faculty and our staff and our students together. Um, so rather than seeing um, our geographical distribution as a disadvantage, I actually see it as a real opportunity for us. A few more things about the ACS. Um, this is actually from the ACS mission statement, and I'll let you read it for yourself, but I'll only point out that there are, you know, really two things that we as an organization try to do. Number one, first and foremost, to articulate the value of a liberal arts education um, in a variety of fora. But what our day-to-day -day work actually looks like is much more of the second supporting collaborative programs between ACS institutions, <coughs> sharing ideas and resources, that's you know certainly something that we talk about a whole lot, but some areas that I really would like us to get our heads together about are these, these other things, raising efficiency of operations and the effectiveness of programs. Thinking not only about efficiency and cost containment, but also assessing our programs um, in blended learning and in digital learning, which is a huge topic um, that we can really help each other on, I think. Um, this is going to be a little too small for you to see, probably. Sorry about that. But this is just kind of to give you a sense of, of who we work with most in terms of granting foundations. And I'll just say, too, that um, since 1994, we have been able to raise something roughly in the area of $28 million in working with these different um, organizations. As you can see, Mellon um, is a huge part of what we do. Um, but we also work with Teagle Foundation. We've had um, a little bit of work even with the government, too. That would be the EPA and the Department of State. Um, and Rasmussen has been really important to us, too, in our environmental programs, which I'll tell you a little bit more about later on. Um, in terms of who we work with, too, there's, of course, the, the other side of this. You know, we're um, not just a consortium alone in and of ourselves, um, but we do work, have historically anyway, worked uh, with two other similar consortia, the Associated Colleges of the Midwest and um, the Great Lakes Colleges Association, too, which have roughly our number of schools, although, again, they are much more kind of um, uh, regionally located than, than we are. I guess the South's just a really big region. Um, and of course, we have a lot of um, history and a lot of partnership with the um, National Institute for Technology and the Liberal Arts, Knightley. I'm sure you all know about that. Um, we're always looking for new ways to bring Knightley into our work. 
this uh, language is from our vision for 2015 statement. Um, and again, these are the kinds of things you might expect to find um, in any sort of um, academic institution's visions for the future. But it really is helpful to look back at these things and think about the role that technology plays in every one of these goals. Strengthening and promoting academic opportunities, promoting cost containment and administrative efficiency, exploring and experimenting with major changes in academic programs and administrative operations. And I want to underline, too, that our approach as a consortium lies very much in that third term there, exploring and experimenting. We're really interested in what faculty and staff on our campuses are doing, learning about that and finding ways to support it. We're really not a very top-down kind of organization that comes up with ideas and visions and then asks you to fulfill them. We really like to work the other way, to know what it is that you want to do and then to find opportunities to expand and to collaborate. So with that, let me tell you a little bit about our programs. And what I'm going to do here, I'm going to talk about some programs that um, are either not within the ACS or are not really active anymore. And I'm doing that both to give you a sense of what kinds of projects we've been engaged in in the past, but also with an eye toward thinking about renewing some of these things, if there's value in them and if there's need for them. <clears throat> the first one, maybe you've heard of, is um, Synoikesis, and although it is no longer an ACS program, it's actually a national program now housed at the Center for Hellenic Studies at Harvard. Um, it's one that we're very proud of and very proud of having played a role in the beginning. Um, it started in 1995 when um, professors in classics programs at ACS schools sort of started to realize that they were, um, sorry, <laughs> trying to cut out the type of breathing, um, started to realize that they were up against a lot of serious challenges. I'm just going to turn it down a little perfect, thank you. Which would include things like um, having small staffs, having small enrollment, you know, are you okay? Good, okay, great. Um, and really, you know, kind of needing resources to get their majors all the way through the major. Um, so they got together and they talked and they um, wrote up a proposal for the Mellon Foundation. And what they ended up creating is really a pretty sophisticated network of um, shared classes, shared research opportunities, um, shared events. And I'll tell you just a little bit about some of the things that they um, do. So I have here virtual attendance and archiving. One of the sort of innovations that they were able to bring was just making sure that, you know, say a, an expert in Hellenic poetry comes and talks at one of the ACS campuses. It's this really great opportunity, but it's only reaching this limited number of people. Why don't we just record it? Or better still, let's find a way to broadcast it and to video conference in questions, right? So this is an event that can be shared across multiple that's one of the things that Synoikesis does. Another thing is sort of a full-blown realization of the vision are these inter-institutional collaborative courses where they actually have courses um, that can be taken by anybody in Synoikesis, um, any student who wants to, um, led by a host institution and then facilitated with video conferencing and also with assigned um, staff, uh, faculty, and tutors on you know, any campus where a student wants to participate. Um, so it's just a really um, fantastic kind of vision of, of what we can do <laughs> um, with network learning. Um, and I have a website there, but I see that it is, as I move this around, I'm dragged uh, <laughs> under the columns there. But if you just uh, Google some noises, you'll find it right away. Realia and Orpheus Alliance are two past programs that I thought you might find a little bit interesting. Um, Realia was actually something that we did in partnership with the other two consortiums that I mentioned to you. And they responded to a problem that was occurring a lot in language instruction classrooms, um, which was that language instructors need interesting materials um, that don't have a lot of copyright restrictions around them to be able to teach with. And so what Realia is, and if you go to that website, you can actually see it. It's still up and running, even though nobody's adding anything to it anymore. Um, it's just a collection of really interesting kind of original culture materials that can be used freely in the classroom for whatever purpose you want. And you have faculty. 
faculty from three different consortiums contributing to it, it's actually a pretty impressive collection. And all the metadata is there, too. Um, another sort of um, experiment in collaboration, past experiment in collaboration, is what was called the Orpheus Alliance, which was, again, smaller departments, for many of our schools anyway, um, music departments, looking for ways to get together, especially around issues of technology. Um, so the Orpheus Alliance actually had a number of interesting events, music technology workshops. So these were opportunities where faculty from different ACS schools could come together and learn to use these new technologies in recording, mixing, and all kinds of music making. Um, but another exciting aspect of it was the development of online teaching modules that would be open to anybody in the consortium on things like music theory and music history. Um, stuff where you might not even necessarily need a whole class, but you really just need a lesson developed by a specialist. Um, and of course, they had a wonderful music festival that went along with it um, in each of their five years of operation, too. Amanda, do you know why these, these projects dissipated? Reality, I'm really not sure. I think that people Orpheus left. Alliance, sorry. What, what? I think people left. So it was just people turnover? Vicki, do you know?
The diversity initiative um, is another important initiative with us, and there are many ways I think that we can think about um, you know what role technology has to play in this, particularly since this is a program that has historically relied on a lot of face-to-face -face conferencing. It would be interesting to think about what it would look like if we were to build in more digital conferencing. Um, but thinking a little sort of further out too, if we look at some of the other sort of things that liberal arts schools have been doing with blended learning. My mind goes to um, Bryn Mawr, for instance, and the work that they've been doing with Next Generation Learning Challenge. A lot of that um, blended learning development is really based around helping students who come from um, groups that are underrepresented at our schools, right, to um, prepare, since they may not necessarily have had a good preparation for being in this intense liberal arts environment, for preparing them. Right, and helping those first year courses uh, be all the more intensive and all the more um, effective for them. So there's all kinds of ways we can think about you know, how we might apply technology to something like the university initiative. Chinese studies um, is another really important program for us um, and something that has really become sort of a top priority for us. We're not only thinking about um, um, sort of, well, I should say, there's a number of projects in our new paradigms initiative, right, um, that Chinese studies faculty have used. They've used it to link one Chinese studies class on one of our campuses with one on another of our campuses. But it's also something that we could probably think about in terms of global networked learning, too. There's all kinds of opportunities to build there. Okay, so now blended learning, um, which is my particular little program uh, that I want to tell you a little bit more about. We actually have a grant program I'll tell you a little bit about that in a minute, um, but I want to tell you about kind of who I am and what I'm supposed to be doing. Um, so I'm the new blended learning director. That's that's my position title, um, and I sort of gave you this picture of this um, old-timey switchboard operator to represent who I am and what I do, um, which I think is appropriate in many ways since a lot of what I do is making connections, and forging connections um, between different partners. It's also a good representation of me too because. Frankly, my background is not in tech. Um, <laughs> I'm a little old fashioned. Um, I'm quickly learning. But um, what I'm really kind of hoping I can do is take the faculty perspective that I bring with me and help to sort of um, build community between IT, uh, between our faculty, between our teaching and learning centers, between our libraries, between all these kind of pieces of the jigsaw puzzle that make learning happen. Um, so a few of the things that I do as the London Learning Director, the grant program that I mentioned before, I actually oversee that, um, and I can help with things like writing up grant proposals for this, I administrate all of the grants that we give out there. I'm also here to help think about new grant opportunities. Um, so our current um, program, which again I'll tell you just a bit more about in a minute, is funded by three different organizations, but we're really looking and to go to new funders um, with new project ideas. And so if you have something in mind that's of sort of a consortial scope, I'd really like to talk to you about it and I'd like to, to be part of that process. Um, another thing that I do is workshop and event planning. Um, so you know whether that is uh, training in a specific technology or getting together to talk about an issue with teaching and tech, that's something that I'd like to be able to help with some resources and, and some time to devote to that. So that's something I can kind of help to build. Um, and relationship building, which I think I kind of talked about. So let me tell you a little bit about the Blended Learning Grant Program. Um, it's structured, you'll notice some familiar numbers, it's structured very much on the way we do our faculty advancement program. Same thing, you send in a pre-proposal, we put it before our um, um, committee, and then we ask you for a fuller proposal and we, we fund you in these amounts. Um, and what we're really looking to sort of promote there, this is the language that we use, um, is computer-mediated instruction combined with interpersonal and interactive pedagogy that distinguishes liberal arts schools. So we're really interested in pursuing, in as many ways as we can, the question of what digital learning, what online learning should look like in the liberal arts context. And of course, that's a really important question that we're all facing, right, um, with the growth incredible growth of online learning, we really need to think about how our sort of historic liberal arts values um, 
impact the way that we do digital learning and online learning. Um, and again, as I said before, too, we're, we're really interested in kind of experiments, too. Um, we like for all of our grants to be not only opportunities to do some great teaching or to make an interesting thing happen on your campus, but for everybody involved to learn more about working with these technologies. Um, so I'm, I'm realizing now that I probably shouldn't have put the and so much more right under those numbers. <laughs> that makes it <laughs> Sort of a liberal arts 
philosophy to online learning? What is it that distinguishes, you know, what the liberal arts can really excel at with online learning? And then a listing of ACS-based projects and some case studies from both inside the consortium and outside the consortium. And I could really use your help with all of this, especially with knowing about what kinds of interesting things are happening around blended learning and digital learning on your campuses um, so that I can include them in this resource. And please, please, please give me a case study I can look at it. Um, because you know the field so much better than I do. I just got here. Um, and I'm quickly kind of learning as best I can, but you know the field. You know what interesting things are happening. Um, another project, this will eventually be, hopefully by the summer, will be a print volume that we can distribute. But I think it would also be really valuable for us to create an ebook out of it too. So um, keep, your, keep your eye out for that one. And cost containment, not, not the most entertaining um, topic, which is why I use this silly picture of I'm using a typewriter. But um, at any rate, cost containment is another issue that the consortium is really thinking about and really trying to um, get our schools together to talk about. Um, and we're looking in a couple of different areas, but again, this is a place where we could, you know, y'all are the experts, right? I'm thinking about ways that, um, you know, digital, um, the whole world of, of digital communication, um, and digital media can help us to do these things. Um, but some areas that we're looking at are libraries, thinking about things like joint subscriptions, joint collections, index and periodicals, um, our international programs. So, you know, thinking maybe about globally networked courses, right? Um, we're thinking about using joint administrative processes for our, for our study abroad programs. Emergency planning, um, so what happens if one of our campuses is stricken, and what role does IT kind of play in helping that campus continue to run? Um, so again, that's another thing about thinking about offering courses online, but also the whole disaster recovery angle of this. And then joint purchasing, too. Um, and lately I've really been thinking about this knowing that joint purchasing can be kind of a, a hard topic because different things work better at different schools. Um, and the last thing we want to do is to mandate what, what everybody has to use, especially if it doesn't fit. So I'm thinking here that maybe what we're after is not so much a shared product as it is just a conversation about the process, right? And what the different schools are kind of doing to streamline their operations. The last CIO hangout, actually, that um, David posted, this topic came up and it was really fascinating. I think we might have a lot to learn from each other. Amanda, did these four things come from the presidents? Did they come from from Mellon? Who who came up with these four areas? These four areas came from the ACS actually, and and they came from um, the auspices of the Woodruff Foundation. So the Woodruff Foundation identified these four areas? No, I think we identified them. Who's we? Sorry, Wayne Anderson. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and the ACS. Although I'm sure Wayne did that probably in conversation with the presidents, but honestly, Pat, I don't, I don't know the answer to that. Yeah, you know, obviously we just, if they came from the presidents, they have a different meaning than if they came from me. <laughs> no, you're totally right about that. You're totally right about that. And I wish I could say more about where that conversation okay. has been. Okay, what was I going to tell you about next? New directions, um, ways that we want to go. So I told you a little bit about who we are and, and what we've been up to. Now I want to tell you a little bit about um, some new directions that we're looking at. Um, and again, trying to see if you were interested. So I'm sure you all know this, but um, Citra College has just um, started a partnership with an organization called Connected Nation, um, which is all about extending broadband access. It used to be just to you know, um, rural parts of the United States and, and other parts where there was kind of an um, information gap, a connectivity gap. Now it's actually about the entire world. <laughs> so it's a very interesting and, and um, ambitious organization. They have just partnered with Center to create this, um, this center, that center, the Edified Center for Connected Campuses, which is really great. It's nice to have this partnership with this organization. And we would really like to explore some different ways that we can use the sort of resources that they're offering to us. And I know that Wayne Anderson, the president of the ACS, actually, I think, just sent out an email with this exact same list um, to our CIO, so maybe some of you have seen this. But and, and he got absolutely no responses right. from anyone. <laughs> 
So this was one of the topics I wanted to bring up to find out what people are actually thinking about this. Do you want to stop the recording? <laughs> <laughs>
environmental uh, faculty and staff that I talked about before, that Elizabeth McNabb has played such a huge role in creating. But the basic idea behind this is that we would start, it's a four-phase project. We would start by creating um, an online repository of resources um, on various different topics relating to sustainability. Um, so things like um, biodiversity or uh, political economy, um, political ecology, I should say. Um, creating sort of five different focus areas in this really large library that, again, everybody in NACS would have access to to use in their classes. Stage two, we start to turn those things into not just a collection of resources, but actual teaching modules that can be used um, in any sort of class that's oriented towards sustainability. Um, stage three is then to turn these five modules into, here's another acronym, a lot um, so hopefully you're recognizing at least the last part of that word, right, from a MOOC. Um, so our sort of approach to this, and this is why I personally am so excited about this project, is that this wouldn't be just a massive, you know, open online course. This would be a liberal arts open online course, something that blends um, all the advantages that we get with online learning with that kind of signature digital arts pedagogy. And one of the ways that we would be doing that is by pairing these, you know, um, mini courses basically in sustainability with um, on the ground experiences at our campuses, where we actually get students who are enrolled in this to do some first-hand resource, uh, excuse me, research um, in sustainability topics. And the reason that I have this graphic here is because we're really sort of picturing this as, as kind of a, a pyramid thing, right? Where anybody would have access to the um, resources in phase one, but then as you get up to phase two and phase three, that's a greater level of involvement, a greater level two, I hope, of possibly some income generation for our, um, our campuses. And then finally, having completed phase four with all of the online learning, um, all of the kind of on-the-ground classes that are included, and the research experience, we would then give anybody who had completed all four of those a certificate in sustainability issued by the ACS. Um, so again, just to tell you about that, I think there are probably, there's probably somebody involved in this on every one of your campuses, um, which is another reason that it's so exciting. We, um, it's rare that we get um, this much buy-in from so many of our different schools um, and across so many different disciplines as well. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, another really important um, topic, as I said, we're in phase one of this right now, you know, pending the approval of all these applications, which we haven't approved yet, so. Um, but we also need to think really hard about where to go for funding for phase two, three, and four. So if you have any ideas about that, please talk to me. Um, we're certainly developing some, but the reason that I put it to you is in part because I think this could be an opportunity to do that thing I was talking about earlier of defining what blended learning looks like in the liberal arts really think this could be a chance, and I'm sure there are others too, for us to put our stamp um, on the topic of online learning. Um, so that's what's going on. That's what I hope will be going on in the future. I'm just going to um, end by giving you a couple of different um, you know, ways to stay in touch that you may not have known about before. First of all, just these questions. What's happening in IT at your institution? What knowledge training is needed for faculty and staff? These are always things that we would really, really like to know because we want to help to, to get those resources where they need to be. Um, I show you um, this copy of the Palladium, right, which is our, our um, little uh, newsletter that we do three times a year. Not just because, oh, I hope you read the Palladium, and I do hope you read the Palladium, but also because I think it's a really, really great way to talk about what is happening um, with IT to a larger audience across um, the ACS. So if there's something really cool, if there's a neat project happening at your school, please tell me about it and let's write something for the Palladium so we can really start to um, keep the conversation you know, going at a high level about this. We also have um, regular announcements that come out a couple of different times of year. So again, if you're having a conference or something that you want to advertise across the ACS for, let me know and I'll make sure that that gets in there. Um, 
We also do, from time to time, um, kind of special papers on topics, special reports on topics. So if you can think of something that needs its own special report that we can then share with the consortium, let me know. And I just wanted to put a plug in, too, for the um, CIO Hangout series that um, David has started, which has been really informative. I'm um, attending all of those so I can kind of keep up with issues, and I think that they have uh, really begun some great information sharing and connection building um, that's needed to happen. And I think, too, that this, this um, gathering is a really great opportunity for that, too. So that's really all I have to share with you. And I say that knowing that I've just deluged you with multiple topics here. Um, but I guess I will um, step aside and we can start discussion. Questions for Amanda? Specific questions? 